Welcome to Monty Friday Art and to my first of what I hope will be a long series of helpful tutorials or tips to get you drawing smarter and quicker. This came about due to viewers noticing in my videos that I draw with plastic in my hand so what I wanted to do today was to explain what that is and uh, through that look at skin textures, how to create them, what you will need to create them and I'm also conscious of the fact that you don't want to sit through three hours of video, so I've tried to condense this uh, into its most important components. So today we're going to need a mechanical pencil, a dark pencil, 2B or upwards. I actually use PNR 2B. These are on sale at most art stores. A paper tortillion, or smudge stick as I call them. This is basically tightly rolled paper, sharpened to a point. I'm sure many of you have used these before. If not, I do suggest you buy some, as they will drastically improve your drawing. And f the final item we need is some sticky tape. So as you can see on screen, we've got this uh, picture of Gal Gadot, which is in the process of being completed. And I've started making tonal references in around the eyes, the nose and mouth, some light textures here and there. But to really ensure we get the most out of our drawing, we need to apply a little more detail. But we'll come back to this in a moment. So before I apply any detail and texture to the actual drawing, let me show you the technique I will use as a practice run. We'll start by creating a light square and a dark square. I'm using the mechanical pencil to create a light area, which I'm hoping is going to show up on camera properly, and the noir to create the darker one. So using the tortillion or smudge stick, I'm going to lightly rub the pencil into the paper to create a gradient, a smooth surface. Um, using the tortillion instead of a finger will give you a far more even texture. I know I'm rushing this now so you can see some of the marks are still showing up, but when you actually come to doing your proper drawing, taking your time and layering the colour evenly will give you a much better surface for this technique to work. You can apply different amounts of pressure to create different levels of colour intensity. Um, so you use it in the same way you would as a pencil. You press harder, you get a darker colour, you press lighter, you get a smoother, lighter colour. Uh, so once you've got the two tonal areas, uh, you're ready to practice the textures. So you want to take a small section of sticky tape and press this a few times on your jeans, trousers, top or fabric, anything you can get your hands on. This removes some of the strength from the sticky tape and also removes the likelihood of this sticking to your drawing. So once you've done that, gently lay the tape over one of the tonal areas, we'll use the dark one in this example, and use the mechanical pencil to create marks, dots and lines. So you can see as I'm doing this, the sticky tape is actually picking up the graphite that was on the paper, leaving a precise impression of where the pencil marked. This is a really quick way of creating details such as hair, skin, pores, blemishes and stubble, without the need to draw it all in, where you can lay in the larger areas of colour without worrying too much about detail, and then add the highlights in after. And I know some of you will be thinking, well, a putty rubber would do this, um, but by replacing the putty rubber or eraser with sticky tape means you get a cleaner, more defined detailing on your drawing. After a while, if you use a putty rubber often, you start getting a, um, a beading in and around it, and you constantly have to cut it and clean it and resharpen, and, and this is just a far quicker way of doing and achieving the same effect. So now that we've uh, practiced, we're ready to move on to the actual drawing. I haven't overused this method too much, and this is a good example of how to use this method. Some people would go in heavy handed and start creating marks all over the place. Less is more with this technique. If you feel like you've taken too much pencil off the page, you can add it back in. The flexibility of this method allows you to find the right compromise of speed of getting it done versus realism, which I think is what most people are after. For the lips I use light lines to bring out the definition of the tiny creases and folds and I can go back over them with a sharp pencil to bring out the subtle shadows. But for the skin I tend to use dots as this gives the indication of pores. From a distance we may see highlights as smooth tones but for close up profiles such as this image we want to add that extra layer of reality. A nose is far from smooth and we want to indicate those imperfections. If you want a really subtle light highlight then you press lightly. If you want something a little brighter then you press quite hard with the uh, mechanical pencil. What I would say is don't try to be too precise, allow an element of randomness into your drawing. 
This will ensure your faces, skin tones and textures do not look uniform. They don't look overworked. They look a lot more natural. And it's as simple as that, really. So I do hope this tutorial or quick drawing tip has been helpful. Uh, do let me know in the comments certainly what you'd like to see next as well. If you do try this for yourself, let me know how you get on. I would love to see the results and I'd love to see how you get on with it, how it works for you. I will be uploading this particular drawing as a time-lapse video in the next few days, so look out for that. Um, in the meantime, thank you for watching. Tap the subscribe button, happy drawing, and I will see you all next time.